live. Really live? Yes. This has been a good fake out on the live today. Uh, sorry, we had some audio issues with our setup that we were running earlier, so this is the third time starting. Uh, I'm here with guests, Moby XL, mechanical engineer Andy Gunderson, everything engineer Shane Colton, uh, and we're going to talk about making this thing. And I'm beginning to think that it's actually easier to design and manufacture Moby XL than it is to get a live broadcast on Facebook to work. What do you guys think? True? Untrue? It's possible, yeah. Shane's thinking like I could I could fix this Facebook Live thing. Just I just need a little I just need a little time. <laughs> uh, so these guys are part of the team that developed Moby XL. Um, my role in the project was kind of product manager, so I make sure that we pack features and things in here that people will actually enjoy and like, and kind of making sure that the package that we deliver hits the right spots in the market. Um, I work with these guys to figure out what is possible from an engineering perspective and what we can actually accomplish in the timeline and team kind of works together to deliver the end product and hopefully people are excited about it and i think with this one based on the feedback we've gotten from you know people watching facebook live early and then now at nab people seem pretty excited so um yeah i'd just love to hear from you guys what do you what do you think about uh your roles on this project like what was what were the difficult things to overcome um what things were you worried about? I know this was a huge leap for Andy because he came into the company and didn't have maybe as much background as some people at the company do in gimbals. So he had to come up to speed super fast on gimbals and did an incredible job of coming up to speed and understanding like, you know, how we design things, why we design things, the way we do the constraints, that kind of thing. So. Yeah, definitely for me, the, the, the scale of the gimbal, uh, coupled with the sort of the weight requirements and the power requirements was a real challenge coming up to that. Um, and I mean, what we have here is, is really impressive from that standpoint of it can hold, you know, it can take a 50 pound payload and it's, it's amazingly responsive and it's still very, um, not only just light and easy to carry around, but still moderately ergonomic. You can actually move this around feasibly as one person, which is pretty impressive. Um, but I had a lot of help from the rest of the team here sort of bring me up to speed on what a gimbal is, uh, how it functions, what the critical aspects of the functionality are. And this has been a really great learning experience and I think we've ended up with a really fantastic product here. Um, it's not just great for you know this one setup it's really flexible uh, it's got a lot of adjustment points but um, but the knob space isn't too huge you can you can work inside uh, sort of a, a very well constrained system we've got these axis locks that make balancing very easy um, the the sliding joints for all these uh, camera balancing parts are are just really fantastic um, and overall it's a not just an easy to use, but an intuitive platform, I think, because you can work down from camera all the way back up to the pan axis, and it's a pretty straightforward system to use. And I've been really, really impressed with the system as a whole and its ability to just sort of adapt to whatever camera platform and accessories we're putting on it that day. Yeah, the thing I think, one thing I'm excited about is the the alignment between Moby XL and Pro um, will mean that when Pro users go to use this, they will immediately understand how to balance the camera, how to install the camera, how to install the cabling, and how to interface with the UI UX. It'll be a seamless transition. There's very few things that diverge as far as the use case for this gimbal, um, and people will, you know, people will be able to get up and running and be getting great shots right away. Um, we've tried to keep it. The, the design philosophy and the use and the, the menu system and structure is congruent with uh, Moby Pro as possible. Um, so I think, how I guess, how have we used this gimbal so far? I kind of have two questions. How have we used it and what are we expecting people to do with it? Like what are the use cases that we designed for? What are you guys thinking about? Well, definitely for like crane. We had on Techno Crane at NAB, which was really cool. Um, car mount, vehicle mount, um, just any place where you need, you know, a bigger gimbal than a uh, Moby Pro, you need a bigger camera package, and um, it's not really for handheld unless you have two people on a long pole or something like that. But, or a giant um, ring. Or a giant ring. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but um, for situations where you're mounting it to pretty much anything, boat, car, plane, 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, so Zolt asked a question, can we still expect shipping in May? I don't know if you in particular can expect shipping in May, but you can expect that shipping will start in May. Uh, I anticipate it'll take us several months to work our way through our reservations and back orders, but that's just off the top of my head. But yeah, we're the whole team here um, is hustling to get these things out the door. Um, the I think on the the Technocrane point, Shane, that remind me one one point that I really enjoyed about NAB and XL was I got a chance to meet a lot of the guys that are working in the the kind of larger stabilized head space and to hear feedback from them on you know kind of what they liked and what they didn't like and how they could see XL being used in the cinema market was really compelling because those guys have a lot of experience that you know we come from smaller gimbals and handheld gimbals and that's what we bring to the design table when we think about the stuff but they have a lot of experience in bigger more professional productions and they're they're kind of feedback and insight as to how this thing could and would be used was really exciting. Um, you know, I had a nice long talk with Lee from Monster Remotes and Scott from Cinemoves and, you know, Technocrane and all kinds of people that have been playing in this game for much longer than we have, so it's great to get their perspective. Um, I think, you know, the, the ways that I've used it, I've been, I've, I got to go out on the Movi XL promo shoot with you and the content team here. And we used it on cable cams. Um, I, if you watched the film, you saw me almost tip over the razor. Um, we had it on car mounts. We had it. Amber set up this runway with a like a vintage plane that we got to film. That was really cool. I got to drive the SQ5 and hit, I think, 113 miles an hour at top speed. So that was really cool. I almost drove a brand new SQ5 off the end of the runway, which might not have been cool. <laughs> um, what else have we used it on? Uh, Oh yeah, robot. <laughs> We've used it on the robot a lot. So we bought this robot off of eBay just so that we could test. Moby XL is so big that the way we test Moby Pro won't work. So we had to find something to move it around to dynamically test uh, XLs as we were building them. So we got this robot. This is the Charles robot. And uh, yeah. Cable Pro cam too. What's that? Cable cam as well. Right? Yeah, yeah, cable cam. Yeah, Corey and Ryan from Motion State had a cable cam on that shoot and it was super fun. Um, we had a really, really long run, and then we had uh, uh, Movi XL and Movi Carbon up on the up on the line, and Hugh was at the Movi controller just grinning the whole time. So I just want to check on questions. Uh, when will we have accessories list on your site, like batteries, mounts? Um, I don't know the exact answer to that, but it'll be sometime soon, sometime in the next week, week or two, because uh, those will need to be there before final orders are placed. Um, can you use it upside down with roll axis staying upright? So no flip camera, Tom, Tommy McManon. Yes, you can. So the roll axis, you can flip the thing over. Um, just imagine just like pro rolling the roll axis over and you'd have the camera still upright, but you'd be in a, uh, do we call that gimbal up or gim gimbal up mm -hmm. orientation? Gimbal up orientation. Um, yeah. Um, so I think, I think we should just talk through the gimbal, kind of maybe from top to bottom. Um, things that, you know, things that people maybe don't realize about it. I can kind of just give a tour, maybe with you guys helping on. You can dive in deeper technically for any of the any of the spots that I might not fully understand. Um, so you'll notice mounts up in the front here. I'm definitely not supposed to tell you that those will be used in the future for landing gear attachment point for something huge that would fly this because that would be crazy to build something like that and we would never tackle it, a problem like that. Um, the batteries are six cell, they're very similar to the packs that would fly in Alta. So they're six cell, 10 amp hour lithium polymer batteries. They've got little state of charge indicators here so you can see we're at half power and we run two batteries in parallel for the system. Powers the whole gimbal and the camera, all accessories, all motors, all downlinks, everything. So there's no wired connection below our quick release plate. So you can literally just kill the gimbal, quick release it off, quick release it onto the other thing you're gonna shoot on, activate the gimbal and you'll be up and running again in no time. Um, but in the event that you do need to pass some sort of wire through to whatever you're mounted to, uh, there is still a hollow shaft on the pan motor. Yeah. 
just like on all the other motors. You would just have to be mindful of, uh, you know, if you did like 10 rotations and you had a stiff cable, you could eventually break the cable. But yeah, you could definitely. And for the first day or so at NAB, we had the Technocrain wired in that way where we had a cable coming down through. Um, we've got this, so kind of working our way down. You can see the motors. They're huge. Um, so David B. designed these. I don't know, what, what what can these motors do? Continuous power chain? Uh, they're about 500 watts peak and then uh, 200 continuous, something like that. Yeah, so it's crazy. It, you know, you can accelerate and decelerate the gimbal uh, just stunningly fast. Um, I've had the thing up at 113 miles an hour behind the SQ5, so a lot of torque. When you, you know, when you push against this thing, it's like you really got to push. Um, the motors, I think... One of the cool things about the motor is great thermal transfer. So, w especially in shots where you're driving in a car, we have really good cooling. You have a lot of airflow going by, and we're really we've done a good job designing the motor such that we get the heat out of them, so we can keep pumping current th into them. Um, make sure you always have enough torque for the shots you're trying to do. This box here is the motor drive. So we call that UMD Mini, in kind of our internal naming. And then there's this E-chain system here that protects the wiring as it comes down into the distribution hub. So this distribution hub does all kinds of things that Chain created and sends power all over the gimbal and I don't know, what else does it do? Uh, it's Sweet. just a main point for splitting off the power from the batteries to the rest of the system. It also collects up the uh, CAN bus and all the other signals and distributes them out to the different motors and uh, different subsystems. And then we've got, um, you'll recognize this from Pro, very similar gimbal control unit, very similar mem menu interface, kind of one of the exceptions is when you go to do something on here, anytime you touch this, it actually disarms the gimbal. And our reasoning there is this thing is powerful enough that it's actually dangerous. It could hurt people if you got your finger in the wrong spot and someone did a full torque command. So we make the assumption that anytime somebody's touching this, the gimbal should be disabled because it's not safe for it to have it powered. But if you want to activate, you just simply go back in there, activate, activate and it will activate. So you can see it did a nice slow ramp from the killed state to the activated state. And then all the menu architecture is very similar um, to Movi Pro. You can plug in wireless receivers for Movi controller or whatever you need to, uh, the API, any of those things via COM1 and COM2. And you can see we've got uh, Movi controller and alpha wheels over here. We have a bunch of questions. Yeah, let me run through them. So we'll just take a second to run through questions. What accessories will we need or everything included to get started? We have Mobi controllers, W gimbal, et cetera. Um, so I think the only accessories that you might want, depending on your application, would be uh, you'd want batteries, you'd want quick release. If you're interested in any of the add-ons, like some of these new pop and locks we have for mounting accessories, um, the, the, the camera plate is compatible with Airy style system, so if you already have that, you could use it. You can get ours with the package if you want. Um, so it'll be the base gimbal. If you already have kind of our whole ecosystem, it won't be, you know, I would, I would anticipate that you'll elect to add the quick release. It's very handy. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else? Lens support, same, that's compatible with Airy standards. Oh yeah, depending on, depending on what you're doing for lens and how it needs to be supported, you might need that. Uh, what's the runtime with these batteries? I don't know the exact runtime. In practice, on the shoot, I was getting at least three to four hours powering the gimbal and the red and all accessories. So that was really fun. You know, get it up on the cable cam and know that you're not going to have to mess around with it for quite some time. Uh, have you guys thought about the aerodynamics now with bigger applications? Yeah, but only briefly, I would say. <laughs> We're trying to schedule some time to get down to the wind, wind tunnel and improve our understanding of exactly what happens at very extreme speeds so that we could continue making gimbals that are more powerful, can go faster, that kind of thing. I would say that this gimbal, Mobi XL is not designed with the lens, through the lens of having a gimbal that goes extremely fast. I would say gimbals like the Cineflex that are more aerodynamically balanced and designed for helicopter use are probably better for very extreme high speed stuff and like the gimbal they have on the Wolf, Learjet and everything. Uh, no smart batteries, right? Oh, oh, sorry, I must skipped one. Benjamin wants to know, how fast have you been able to travel with gimbals on the front of the car? Uh, I think I personally have gone 80 to 85 on the front of the car. 
I'm not convinced that the front of the car is worse than the back of the car, though. The worst, the back of the car is like wildly turbulent. Um, and so the batteries, I guess it depends on what your definition of smart batteries are, but um, they have state of charge indicators and various other protections here. So they're, I don't know, maybe they're like uh, elementary school batteries. They might not be PhD batteries, <laughs> but I don't know. Uh, Daniel Green, Tab did not say that we're not planning a bird for this beast. Can you make a shout out to Canada? Absolutely, I make a shout out to Canada every single morning when I give Hugh a high five when he walks in the door. <laughs> He's my favorite Canadian. Uh, love the wheel control. Yeah, these alpha wheels are rad. So they interface nicely with Moby controller. Um, at this point, I just have to accept that I've lost the war on wheels and I will never be able to convince people that are obsessed with wheels that they could control something in another way. So we've lost, we're moving on. Uh, let's keep working our way through the gimbal, though. You got a shout-out, Shane, from Bradley Warren Hansted. Hey, Brad. <laughs> uh, where were we? Oh, so let's just, I just want to show access locks. This has actually become one of my, maybe my favorite features. So I just killed the gimbal. And you can see we've got these nice little quick-release access locks. So there's a variety of holes in this ring. And you can see as, as the axis moves, those move around and then you can actually just take and lock this in. And so now roll axis, that just clicked in, roll axis is locked. So when you're setting up a camera for the first time and you're not quite sure where balance is or you're moving the gimbal from the crane to the cable cam to the car, it's super convenient to have these axis locks. Um, really, really, really nice. Definitely my favorite feature as well. Axis locks? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like a simple thing, but it really helps with setup, especially I think it's more significant on bigger gimbals like XL because you're working, you're trying to install this big, big camera package and it's kind of unwieldy to begin with. So it's super nice to, super nice to have it in there. Yeah, we have a, like a 55 pound big steel test mast that we use for the gimbal testing and I can install it and remove it myself. I'm not a big person, but I can totally do it myself with the axis locks. Um, well, let's keep working our way around. I'm gonna activate it again. Yeah, come around the side, we're gonna work forward. So, kind of a conventional Movi architecture roll beam. Uh, we've got carbon closeout panels. These keep the wiring and everything that's in there safe and they also help to stiffen the structure, turn it into a box. Uh, we've got a GPS antenna here, pretty high performance, overly expensive in my opinion, GPS antenna. Um, <laughs> the good thing about having a good GPS antenna is you get good GPS signal, which we then use to keep the horizon level even under extreme accelerations. Uh, yes, locks on tilt, Ben. Uh, so we've got 50 mil tubes coming down, bearing support on this side, motor on this side. You can see the axis lock on tilt actually right here. Motor drive tucked in here. We've got uh, a tilt cage that's very similar to what you see on Movi Pro. Just the tubes are much, much bigger. So these tubes are 25 mil. Tubes on Movi Pro are 15 mil. Um, big lens support, airy compatible camera mount, uh, top rail system that's very similar. All kind of, let me kill. Is this compatible with the Ronin 2? This is incompatible with the Ronin 2. <laughs> So very similar top rail design to Moby Pro. We've also got a variety of um, mounts for accessories. And like when we had to set up the Panavision DXL at NAB, this was really nice because we didn't know exactly how power was gonna mount. So we were able to actually screw a V-lock plate here and then have the lead going down to the camera. So there are two three millimeter helicoils here and a quarter 20 helicoil and you can mount um, you can mount pop mocks or you can mount accessories directly to there and we've got a variety of mounting holes all around the gimbal so there's one on the tilt motor there's a bunch on the cage uh, you can kinda, we've, just, we've tried to put them just anywhere we have extra aluminum that we could put one and then we've got um, 19 millimeter rails just we want the whole thing to be super stiff so we got pretty thick wall carbon fiber rails there you can mount your motors to them. They help stiffen up the whole kind of camera and lens package. Um, we've got this adapter plate. 
that allows you to mount the top rail to a variety of cameras from airy to red to uh, what do you remember all the cameras it covers um airy red alexa okay. the the mini the the mini requires a, another adapter the phantom um there's another one or two in there i think it was the different alexa models mm -hmm. so lee says what happens when xl cannot get a gps signal um it burst into flames so <laughs> make sure you get good gps no uh when we don't have gps we simply don't use that signal to improve our like kind of i am our, our imu attitude estimate so it would be running off of just the imu like the, the actual gyros and accelerometers with no gps input but i probably shouldn't say any more on this like this is really <laughs> shane's domain yeah I, I think the key is like um, it's covering cases where you're outside on a car uh, going really fast around a turn or something like that where you're getting high G's um, and you need to compensate for that uh, to keep the horizon level. Um, if you're doing high G stuff indoors, obviously that doesn't work, um, but there is still um, some amount of software that uh, tries to clamp, clamp the amount of accelerometer uh, corruption you get on, on the roll, even indoors. A few more questions. Um, <clears throat> Will you guys be selling the stabilizing arm used on the car mount from the video of vibration isolators as well that can be used with this unit? Um, we will, I don't know exactly how we're going to work with Flowcine yet, but I love their stuff and we'll, we're going to do our best to make it easy for XL customers to get the same exact setup that we've had success with. So we're talking to those guys and figuring out exactly how to, how to help our customers get it easily but not waste our entire lives with administrative tasks. Um, you can mount a GH5 on the Movi. It would look absurd. You can on Provo. Also, that bird, that bird answer was suspiciously vague. <laughs> you picked up on that, huh? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, where were we? I think we're almost done. TSU. Oh, yeah, 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 TSU. Good call. So TSU, tilt stage unit, very similar to what's on Movi Pro. So drivers for focus, iris, and zoom two DTAP power outputs, and then a variety of connections over here. Small computer connection, camera connection, CAN connection. What is there, a UART connection? Is there a UART connection? No. Yeah, uh, RS-232 for like um, controlling the red through RCP. Oh yeah, there's time code too. Oh, one thing, one thing I glossed over. Um, on the GCU, there's actually a 12 volt DTAP output as well. I'm just checking to see if we have any other questions. So let me go live. You can see very nice, accurate control with the wheels. So you can set up, uh, if you want to set up like this, we have Moby controller mounted to the wheels. So you have pan and tilt on wheels, you have focus, iris, and zoom, um, and then all of the Moby controller menu options. One, one thing, just in case people don't know from watching Pro, um, with this gimbal, you'll be able to connect to the red RCP cable and have full control over red. And we're, we're gonna continue building out the control uh, functions for red over time, so you have more and more control options when using a RED camera, which I think that and the access locks for me are kind of my favorite things about this new generation gimbal ecosystem that our team has developed. You know, being able to, when you're flying the Alta, hit record, change iris settings, focus with Canon lenses or with, you know, lens motors, whatever you want to do and have access to RED RCP, like to even go and play back while you're flying is like, it seems, you know, when I go back in time five years to the stuff I was using back then with, you know, Hugh having to push the record button before we took off. And one of the first things that we would always ask, like after I took off, I'd be like, Hugh, did you hit record? And he would like shake shuffle around for a minute trying to like rack his, <laughs> rack his brain to think if he hit it. And he's like, oh God, maybe you should land. I don't remember. I gotta, you know. We had many a time where I was pretty convinced we got the most epic shot in the history of aerial cinematography only to find out that we didn't hit record. Uh, let's see. 
Did you take the cog wheels off a warship? I don't know what that means. Cog with center of gravity wheel. These? These did not come off a warship. <laughs> Andy, did you come off a warship? No, no. No? Okay. Do we need to keep bugging Aerie for mini control? Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> I'm pretty tired. I'm pretty tired bugging them. So if you could carry the torch for a while, Chris Fenner, that'd be fantastic. Uh, yeah, Mitchell mount, that's a good point. So you can mount a Mitchell adapter to this piece here if your primary use case is Mitchell. Uh, we're hoping that we can convince everybody to adopt our quick release ecosystem because it's much more fun to use than a Mitchell mount is. I would, if you are the person that designed the Mitchell mount, please call me, <laughs> call me ASAP. I've got some product management feedback for you. Um, what's the operating weight with LiPo's no camera package? Thanks, from Graham Newton, Andy. Andy's our weight guy. For the bear, bear gimbal, you're 25 pounds, but uh, this setup right here, as it's all rigged up, is uh, about 58 with the camera and everything. Do you guys play Counter-Strike? No, not anymore. Do you? I, I used to, not anymore. My brother still does, I think. Did Steve Jobs like the Moby or Ronan more? Steve Jobs didn't see the need for either. He said this phone works just fine. <laughs> Uh, what about bugging Canon for C300 control? Also a great idea. I love that. Bug everybody. Yeah, if, like our stance on camera protocols is we don't want to spend the rest of our life chasing down camera protocols. But if we have camera protocols, we will definitely implement them uh, swiftly. That's what was super nice about RED. They have documented protocol. We did not have to ask them a single question. Corey Schwartzmiller just picked up his bag of grain, ate the grain, sat down at his computer, Wrote the RCP part of Moby Pro and we were done. It was fantastic. Like a, like a smart little chicken. I have no sound. Can you source that answer? Did he really? No, Steve Jobs did not really say that. I mean, maybe he did. I don't know. Uh, anything else we should touch on? What challenges did we face? What were the major hiccups? I mean, for me, it was pretty easy. My job was pretty easy this time since we were able to start with a lot of the electrical and software infrastructure we had built out for Moby Pro. Um, I think the biggest challenges were scaling up the current for higher higher power motors. Um, that sort of drove the need for the distribution box and um, just testing at higher higher uh, current levels than we had for Moby Pro. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, mostly just scaling up was the biggest challenge for me. Yeah, scaling up the, the mechanical structure too got the whole squared cube problem, so, you know, the, the carbon on this is, it's a lot stiffer um, than, on the, than on the Pro, it's a lot, lot thicker walls. Um, and then also just being able to be uh, uh, compatible with some of the industry standards like the area mount plate and stuff, that's all, you know, tricky to get, uh, to get absolutely right with other manufacturers. Yeah, I would say, I guess the, the one for me making sure that we hit the performance targets that we wanted to with this. That was, that was important and stressful for me on this. And then what was really important to me is I wanted to bring the ease of use of Moby Pro to the big head market. And so getting things that are really exquisite to use, like, you know, we spent a lot of time developing the toad in the hole and that saved a ton of people time on set. So I wanted to bring some of those type of little innovations and nice features for people with this product. And anytime you really want to make something that's refined and exquisite, it's difficult. You have to do iterations. And you know, our first version quick release, we ran into issues with the aspect ratio, and it didn't, you know, it didn't slide nicely. It didn't do everything we wanted to do, so we have to revise it, and iterate, and iterate. And you know, you run into all kinds of things that you don't foresee at the beginning of the project. Um, but that's part of the product development process, and that's why they have a portion of it called the trough of despair, because. You start out flying high thinking this is going to be easy and we'll wrap this up in a month and then you go into the trough and then hopefully, you know, six to eight months later you exit and have something that you're still excited about and potentially the world is excited about. Uh, so Sean had a question, are the motors still as smooth and stable at much slower speeds on a crane, for example, or when used, more when used in anger? Um, the motors are smooth when used in anger and I would say they're still smooth when used on a techno crane. The techno crane demo we had at NAB was just buttery smooth. I could have played with that thing all day. What did you think, Hugh? Hugh's, Hugh's got an exquisite eye. Feels fantastic. Yeah? Yeah. I didn't even pay it's, him to say that. 
Uh, Slow, fast. At any, any of you guys have a super slick AC rig set up on your Mimic. I'd love to copy that setup if you have a parts list. Order our Mobi Pro, but before it was even available, love it. Thanks, Nate. Uh, super slick. Is he talking? Are you talking about the fake camera setup that we had? Or I brought Pilot today too. So this is our this is our hand unit, which will be released shortly after Mobi XL. Um, but it's got iris, a zoom, a two-axis zoom joystick, A B buttons, and then a really nice adjustable damping focus module. A B buttons here, so you can do all kinds of interesting things with it. I'll turn it on in a sec. Uh, so, if, Nate, if that's what you're talking about, we can put together a parts list for the fake camera thing that we that we set up. It was pretty hacked together, so I'm sure with a little bit of work we can refine that into a decent package. But I agree that was a super fun way to operate if you were using that one. Does the XL run a Mitchell mount, or does it need to be adapted from the Moby Quick Release system? That's Ben. Uh, ben, so this plate here, I don't know if you'll be able to see the separation. You can bolt from that plate directly to our Mitchell plate. Is that correct, Andy? Yep. Okay. Or you can bolt from that plate to our quick release then to, to the Mitchell. Yeah. So you can do either way. If you're going to go a full Mitchell workflow and you want to have it as light and slim, low profile as possible, you can go Mitchell direct to here. Or if you want the flexibility of using Mitchell and quick release, which I like, uh, you can use our intermediate plate. Do you guys have board game night at Freefly? If yes, can I join? We don't have one, but if you start one, you can come. Uh, look forward to trying it out. I'm a key grip out of New Mexico. This is Trevor Rogers, and I have a big need for something this size for crane work and car work. Uh, that's awesome, Trevor. I can't wait to hear what you think. Hopefully we didn't totally screw up the design of this thing. Uh, game night sounds fun. Sign me up. Not the fake camera setup, but I like that too. Oh, Nate, it was on the Mimic bar. You had Teradex, Small HD monitor, Anton, Bauer, Brick. Okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about now. I think we just had uh, like a fully powered Mimic setup. We, we sell all the stuff to replicate that on our store if you want to. Uh, are you going to start selling the part, the 13 millimeter plug plugs into? Um, I don't know about that, but it's a good point. We need we need to it, like the female part of the 13 millimeter quick release thing. What Yusuf? What are you trying to mount that to? Like just you just need like a cheese plate to 13 millimeter adapter. What other issues do we run into? I'm trying to think. Battery the, positioning, ease of ease of mounting of batteries. Yeah. So this this uh, Velcro strap solution is is a lot better than what we started off with. Um, it lets you you know keep the straps on the gimbal while you're, you're you can just loosen them slightly, slide the battery out, but it holds them very very securely. Yeah. Actually, Corey from Motion State and I had a pretty heated argument about the validity of battery straps, and. Uh, he was like, fine, you, you, it's your death, you know, if those things fall off. And he went out and used it on the first shoot and retracted his statement. He said, I take it back, the batteries, the straps are fantastic. They're super quick to change and ultra lightweight. I was like, that was a small victory for me. Um, just so you two know, apparently uh, game night starts on Friday at 7. Brett Ogden will bring chips. Perfect. All right, we'll bring salsa. Do you guys play WOW? What's that? World of Warcraft? Mm -hmm. No, I don't. Do you guys? No. No? Never have. You? You? No. <laughs> uh, will you guys be at Cinegear? Yeah, we'll be at Cinegear somehow, some way. I don't know exactly how yet. You guys used them on the pilot setup on the Mimic handlebars, didn't you? Uh, we did have one like that at NAB, yeah. A 13 millimeter plug? Oh, no, sorry. I thought you were talking about the modules. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know which one you're thinking of, but if, if we haven't made it and you need it, we should make it. Um, when do you start to ship, Lee? We start to ship in May. I don't know the exact date. I tried to try to weasel an exact date out of Alex, but he just ran away. <laughs> it's like, come back, come back. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, sometime in May. We're still figuring out details. Do you have a back pan on off function? Does back pan just mean turning off stabilization? Does anyone know? I think that's what it means, but I'm not sure. Uh, Alexander asks, what motivated you to copy the Ronin design? Um, you know, we just scour the internet and look for inspiration wherever we might find it, and then we <laughs> just take the best ideas from other people and quickly implement them into our own products. Oh wait, never mind, we don't do that. Uh, we go for a long walk and think about what the, what the most elegant way to solve a problem would be, and then attempt to do it, realize that we can't quite do that, so we do the best thing that we can. Uh, looking to purchase Moby Pro next week. Awesome, thanks. How long did it take to develop XL? Eight months. 
Uh, probably 10 months by the time you factor in Dave B's initial work, too. Yeah. 10 months or so. All right, I think we're done. Anything else you guys want to add? Hugh, Evan, anything to add? Oh, hold on. Yes, uh, if you want to work at FreeFly, check out FreeFly Careers. Uh, we're growing and trying to continue building an awesome team here. Reservations for Movie XL, Carbon, and Pilot are open. Base price for this bad boy, nineteen nine ninety five, and starts shipping in May in the order that orders were received. So I think that covers it. Hugh's got to get jamming. He's got to get to CrossFit. <laughs> Hugh, you got uh, 11 minutes, I think. Uh oh, right. Evan, anything to add? Nothing. Every Axis? Check out Every Axis. Evan's worked really hard on it, super proud of it. I think it's great. Uh, the interview with Jeff is absolutely compelling, and he is one of the most influential people in the drone space that I've ever met. He was doing such high quality work when the gear was so bad. So listen to that podcast. I think you'll like it. Any shout outs? Shout out to Dave B. Shout out to Dennis. Shout Thanks shout for coming back. Oh, I talked about Try Before You Buy. Oh, uh, Try Before You Buy program on Movie Pro launches Monday. So the idea there is you can Rent a Movie Pro for seven days. If you like it, you keep it, and you send us a little bit extra cash. Uh, if you don't like it, you send it back and write us a snarky note. We're pretty confident that you'll like it. So uh, let me just check questions one more time. No, I just joined. Bye, guys. See you on Friday. Oh, yep, see you Friday. Can you turn off stabilization on individual axis? No, you can't right now, but I'm sure it would be ultra easy to add that. We worked so hard to add stabilization <laughs> to the axes, and now you just want to turn it off. Can I have a shout out? Alexander Heller, shout out, absolutely. Do some good work today, Alexander. Try before you buy him Movi XL. Maybe in the future, I would love to. Um, we gotta get through reservations and back orders before we do anything like that. Okay, we're out. Thanks guys, it's been fun. <laughs>